Okay. Let's see, one second, let me check it in the engine. Hey, we are live. Hey. Okay. Hi, everyone. Hello, this is Joe Chow from H2. Uh, welcome to my show again. This is Mac with H2. Uh, this time we are talk about, we're going to talk about WAVE. So you see, I have my colleague with me today and I'll introduce them later. Uh, this is a show about um, anything with H2. So if you make something with H2, feel free to contact me uh, in the future. So if you want to come on to the show and talk about it, just reach out to me. Okay, so two weeks ago, we talked about uh, the Wi-Fi challenge. So this is our first AI for good uh, competitions uh, hosted by H2. Uh, so my colleague, uh, Mark and Gabor, they helped me with uh, introductions two weeks ago. So uh, thank you, Mark and Gabor, if you're watching right now. Uh, so if you missed that video, if you missed that introduction, you can go back to the uh, H2 channels on YouTube, Twitter, and, 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 and LinkedIn to watch it again. So today, uh, we're going to get a bit more hands-on. So we want to show you some hands-on example, a live demos of how to build and deploy AI apps uh, on our platform. So before that, let me just uh, introduce my colleague, Zerini and Asim. So hello, please introduce yourself to our audience. Hello, everyone. My name is Srini. Uh, I am a software engineer at H2O.ai. I am one of the team members who built the wildfire challenge. Hello, this is Azim. I also am a part of the engineering at it's 2 ai um, Thank you for being with us. We are super excited. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. So, Shivini, are you ready to present your first part? Yes. Okay. So the stage is yours. Okay. Start screen share. Am I screen sharing? Yep, go for it. Okay. Give me one second. There we go. Okay, so you can see my screen, right? Yep, that's cool. All right, great. So thank you everyone for joining us today and participating in the wildfire challenge. Um, there's 121 teams as of now, thank you very much. Um, today, let's make a wave app. So before we begin, I just wanna ask you all a question, pop quiz to begin. Uh, so there are two kinds of Python programs we can make with Wave. Uh, can anybody know uh, what are the two types? Uh, can, Joe, just like, if somebody answers in the chat, can you read the chat? Um, not yet. I think you have to keep the answer now. Okay, I will just give the answer. So the <laughs> two types of Wave <laughs> programs, one is Wave apps and the other one is Wave scripts. Um, so today we're gonna make a Wave app. So I also want to share some of the important links before we begin. So if you want to go there, follow along with me, uh, check them out, that is nice. Uh, Wave documentation uh, is excellent. Uh, Wave.h2o.ai is a website for Wave. There is a lot of material there to read, uh, very interesting uh, stuff there. Uh, if you have any questions, though, how to get things done, something's not working, we can always make a discussion uh, at Wave discussions on GitHub. Uh, you can download the latest Wave from Wave releases page. And of course, uh, anything related to Wildfire Challenge, there's Wildfire Challenge forums. Uh, you can find me there, same name, Srini. Uh, there's also a community Slack. Uh, you can talk about wildfire and everything uh, H2O AI related there. So today there are three main topics uh, I want to get to. Uh, one is just download the Wave server and get it running on your OS. Uh, let's uh, get Wave 2 running on your laptop or computer and then go through the Wave 2 examples. 
and also make our own wave app today. So we have the slides. Uh, we can also go actually do it. Uh, so today is all about getting things, uh, making things. So, so we start with making a directory for our wave servers. So I create a wave B and then let's download. Uh, so we can download uh, from here. So if we go to wave releases page, uh, 0 19 0 is the latest release. Uh, I am on Mac OS, so I will download the Darwin. Uh, you can also just download it using browser and cop copy that to your desired location. I like use command line and download. And then is the font size good enough? Can everybody read it? Should I make it bigger? So once we download it, we can extract this. And it's it's a very small uh, package. It's only about nine megs. So it is quick to download. So once we download and we go into this folder, the we have a binary called wave D. And then to start a wave server, it is as simple as just running the binary. And then wave is here. So to test that it is working, we can go to localhost 10101. And when we see this wave live uh, thing, then we know wave server is working. So once we make a wave app, we will see that wave app load here set up this uh, live logo. So next step uh, is to get the wave tour working. We, we did all these uh, and we got there. Next step is wave tour. So to get to wave tour, what we can do is we'll go back to the same folder, wave tour is actually included. All the code for wave tour is included in this uh, tar file that we downloaded. So we go to the same folder we were there before. And the wave tour is in these two folders, demo and examples. So I like, we can create a virtual environment in this folder and then run the wave tour from here. I like to copy these but I like to copy these into a separate folder. So let's do that. Then copy these two uh, demo comma examples. Okay, so go to tour. So once we're in the tour, we can see that we have our uh, code here. So to get this going, we just need to create a Python virtual environment. So let's check what Python version we have. Uh, I have 3.7.9. Anything 3.6 or above will work. So I have Python. I will create a virtual environment by using VM. So once I have it, I can activate it by saying either source uh, or just dot and bin activate. Okay, so once we see this on the prompt, uh, or we can check uh, where our Python right now is, if we do which Python, uh, as long as it is Python is coming from our virtual environment folder, we are doing good. So we can start by upgrading our pip. This is not absolutely necessary, but sometimes it will save us trouble. So now we we can install the requirements from file from example. So pip install dash r, so examples folders has a requirements.txt. So we can install all the dependencies from there. 
Uh, so far, any questions? Anything not clear? All good so far. Okay. So this should be really quick uh, within a minute. If it takes any longer, we will go to backup. So I'm reading one of the questions here so far is how do we integrate pure HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Bootstrap, et cetera, into Wave app? Uh, it is, uh, we may not be able to get to it in this, in this meeting, but next week maybe, or I can answer that in, in the forums. Okay, so we, we, we finished this one. So now, we can just run the tour, right? So to run the tour uh, or any wave app, we use wave run. So this time I'm gonna use a special flag called no reload. No reload means when we make live changes to the code, uh, the, the app won't be updated. So normally when we are debugging we and we are changing the code continuously, it, we don't use this flag. So we can see the changes live. So wave run no reload uh, examples. So there is tour.py that we can run. There we go. So tour is up to go to tour. We go to localhost, the same port, and we type slash tour. Voila, so we have tour here. Uh, so the way tour works is we have all the code on the left side and uh, the app itself. Uh, for that code is running on the right side. So we can load the same app by itself uh, at localhost slash demo, right? So I wanna show some of the interesting uh, uh, examples I like in Tor. Uh, first one is the to-do app. So here, this is a complete example of how do we make an app you can see there is a decorator here. Uh, we will talk about this more in the coming sessions. Uh, so, but but the, the, the cool thing about app is we can interact with it. So this can take input from user, like, and then it can make changes. It can give response. So uh, Wildfire Starter Kit is also an app and not a script. So we can, check off to do's and then do different things. Uh, one other thing I really like is the dashboard example. So this is not an app, but this is a script, right? So uh, to actually get a better look at this one, we have to load it by itself. So demo, if we go to demo. So here's the complete view of the dashboard. This has a lot of um, different ways we can show information. So other things I like are form. So if you see the form example, here's again, the whole code for everything you see on the right side is on the left side. So form has every example of every in way you can get input from the user, right? So there are checkboxes, dropdowns, uh, everything. Another one I like is table. Uh, table, there are multiple table examples that shows uh, how we can show different tables uh, with filter options, sort options, search options. Another one I like is plots. So there are a lot of plots. So every plot you can think of is available in Wave. Uh, so let's see, plot app. So here's is a plot. So there's like a stack bar charts here. Uh, other than that, we can also, so there are two types of plots you can make in Wave. So these are native Wave UI plots. When we use these, we get some, so if you see here, the code is very minimal uh, and you get the hovers and this uh, tooltips, et cetera. 
but if you like, if you already have Python code where you use MATLAB or Bokeh or some your favorite plotting Python tool, you can directly use that code also. So here there are examples on how to do that. You can use Pandas, Vegalite, Altair, Bokeh, Matplotlib, Plotly, and D3JS, everything. So to in our Wave app, today we will use a Matplotlib example, use this exact Matplotlib example to make our Wave app. Uh, any questions so far uh, regarding, regarding this? Uh, no. so one, one quick question about um, uh -huh. debugging the the uh, wave app with a uh, VS Code. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. What would you do if you want to use uh, VS Code as your IDE and then debug the um, the app? Yeah, we can do that. Uh, I use VS Code. Uh, I also use PyCharm uh, pretty much uh, equally, and we can use any of those to debug our wave app. Um, again, we don't have time to get into that, but next session, definitely, uh, I can show you step-by-step step how to set up a project in VS Code and with all the IntelliSense and uh, live reload and debug and extra. Yeah, we can step through code and all those things. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. So, so now we have our tour working, WebD working, everything working. Let's go. Uh, again, uh, make our own Wave app. So I'm going to leave the two running here and then open a new tab and then go to our favorite folder here, go to Sandbox, uh, and then create a folder for our Wave app. Uh, we'll take a break from creativity and then just call it Wave app. And so we're in Wave app, and you know the drill. Uh, first thing is to create a Python virtual environment, uh, or actually copy the code this time. Let's copy the code uh, uh, from our tour, the matplotlib example, uh, uh, into our uh, app folder here. So that is inside. If we go there, it's inside Wave D tour examples. Uh, Plot underscore mat plot. So how do I know this? Um, so if you're inside tour, you can go to any example here. The file name is uh, right on top. So if you search for mat plot, don't print. So there we go. So. So matplotlib uh, is here, so plot on for matplotlib. So you can repeat everything I'm doing here to convert any of these uh, uh, examples into a wave app, and then you can start building from there. So we can gonna name it app.py. So we have our app.py here, and then let's set up Python virtual environment. Dash n, vn, dot vn. Again, this second half, you can name it anything you want uh, out of um, like habit or custom, I call it vn. Okay, then vn in activate, upgrade this. Okay, so now if we do pip list, if we do pip list, there should be no packages here. So the minimum we need one package is H2O wave. Uh, so let's install that. So once we have H2O wave, we can make wave apps. Uh, we know we are doing matplotlib. So here we also need matplotlib. So let's install that, both of them. Great. So we have our app, we have our virtual environment, we got our dependencies. 
before launching the app, I want to make one small change to this, which is which is where um, I want to see the app, right? So inside this app decorator, there is a path. So whatever name we give it here uh, will be the destination of our app, right? So let's call this matplotlib. Right, so once we make the change, we can run our app. So here we don't have to give the no reload. So just uh, do wave run and give it the file name. Our app is running now. So this time we go to localhost, same port 10101, but we go to matplotlib. And there is our matplotlib example. So what this is doing is it's just making a scatter plot of two random variables. Uh, we could change how many points we want and we can change the, the alpha of these. Uh, so it's more lighter, it's more darker. Uh, right. So any questions for this? So not yet. Keep going. Okay, so we so here are the slides if you want to refer. But we did we copied the tour. Uh, we did the tour part, and then we made our app. We copied Matplotlib. We created a virtual environment, and then we installed all the dependencies, and then we ran the app, and we got the app. So here are the same links again. So we're at the end of this uh, presentation. We got to our three tasks that we want. We said uh, we wanted to do. Um, any questions? Thank you, Sereni. I just want to uh, add one okay. thing. Uh, so we will yeah. work together to turn this content into blog posts, a few blog posts in the future. So uh, we try yeah. to, you know, we use the content and try to make it uh, consumable in different formats. So uh, don't worry if you don't get all the things in one go, but so we will have, we will help you yeah. all the way with uh, more materials coming up uh, on our website. Okay. So uh, let's yeah. see, Asim, are you, are you ready to um, do your demo? Yes, Joe. Okay. Go for it. Go for it. So, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank yours. you, Shani. Thank you, Joe. Just getting things set up here. Okay, thank you again. Um, now let's talk about how to get your H2O Wave apps up and running on H2O AI Cloud. I am going to talk about a few things here, starting with what is H2O AI Cloud and why we have uh, provided this um, platform, uh, an AI Cloud platform for the Wildfire Challenge, how it's beneficial for the Wildfire Challenge. Um, the different user modes that we offer to the participants. What are some of the prerequisites for you to get started on the cloud? And lastly, we'll do a, a short, fun, hands-on demo, um, and we'll deploy our own app on the cloud instance. Um, so first, AI cloud and H2A cloud, you, you have your h 2 wave apps, and you want to bring them up on the cloud so that you can operationalize them. You have your machine learning and AI applications that you want to put to the market. So h 2 AI Cloud is a platform to do that. It's one platform, one API, and it allows you to streamline the whole app development process, starting with app development, deployment, and market release. Um, it comes with a comprehensive developer guide that will link you to, and it gives you a comprehensive background on uh, background into some of the uh, essential concepts, like what a app developer is, what a app user is, the difference between um, an app and an app instance, um, what does it mean when you say app visibility, et cetera. So that developer guide is pretty useful when you first get started. Um, next, for the wildfire challenge, H2O uh, AI has provisioned and made available a fully managed cloud instance um, for the wildfire challenge. And why this is useful is essentially 
there are three three big advantages for that. Um, first, you have your H2O Wave app running on your local host. Now you can put put it on the cloud, get it up and running within minutes, and you can de debug it. Sorry, debug it on the cloud environment, and you can de debug it on the competition environment. So you get a feel of how your app is going to be evaluated, and what does it feel like? How how fast does it run? Um, are there any things that you may want to make better? So that's the first use. Second is it's so easy to collaborate with your team now because once you put the app um, on the on the cloud instance, um, you can easily share uh, the app with your team members. They can run their own instance and look at your app. So it's much more uh, powerful in the sense um, that collaboration is very easy. And um, lastly, and this is uh, uh, this is my favorite one. You can also make it open source. So one of the thing H2O has always, uh, one of the principles that H2O um, has stuck to from the very beginning is uh, making AI um, accessible to everyone. So this is an opportunity to make your app open source and it will be available on, if you wish to, it's optional. It will be available on the app store and others can play with it, run their own instance um, and get inspired. So. Those are the three main advantages of using the Wildfire Challenge AI Cloud. Um, so to get into some of the technical things, um, there are two different user modes that the Wildfire Challenge AI Cloud provides. Um, those are publish cloud private and publish cloud public. And the difference between the two is when you publish your app privately, it immediately runs on the uh, on the AI cloud, and you can use your Wave app on the AI cloud. But it's only accessible to you, and it's private. It doesn't appear on the App Store. It's a private app with a private instance. The second one is Publish Cloud Public, and in this case, um, when you publish the app to the platform, you make it accessible to all participants, and it appears on the App Store. Uh, we'll look at that in just in just a second, and other participants, um, that is all users, can look at the app. They can run their own instance and interact with your app. Um, so those are the two different user modes. And um, we'll look at them both in the fifth uh, section, which is the hands-on demo. Um, but that's, that's the general idea. And there are only uh, a couple of prerequisites. The first one is H2O CLI. And you need this uh, command line interface so that you can your developer uh, your development environment can interact and communicate with uh, the wildfire challenge AI cloud instance. You'll authenticate and configure your development environment, and you can get started within minutes. And it provides a whole bunch of use cases, um, including like the most essential ones, that is um, deploying your app, um, importing your app to the app store. Uh, looking at your instances, looking at your apps, deleting them, etc. Um, so that's the first prerequisite. The second one is the Wildfire Challenge Starter Kit. And this is actually optional. You don't need it because you can always refer to the developer guide and you can use the H2O CLI directly. But why the Wildfire Challenge Starter Kit is useful is because um, it not only provides you with uh, a concise um, description about what each uh, use case is and why it's useful, but it also provides a make file. So these make commands are super useful and convenient to use. And um, it's you, it, it, it would take you uh, minutes to get, get started uh, with the AI Cloud instance, but it's optional. And um, I'll get to it in just a second. And the last one is Wave Apps app toml file. And some of you who've already started making your Wave Apps might already know this. It's a file that gives uh, details about the app itself. So what the title is, um, what category it belongs to, description. Um, you can provide app secrets. You can provide uh, a whole lot of other information for your app. And again, this is um, described in detail with examples on the developer guide that we'll link you to. So going back to the starter kit, you can. it's available um, uh, on GitHub and you can get access to it from the Olympics platform, H2 Olympics platform, and um, it links you to all the useful resources. So um, I think it's in getting started. Yeah, so here it is. Um, I'll go 
to the starter kit. And the first prerequisite, which is CLI, uh, there's, a there's a download link here in the starter kit. Um, so I'll open that. And since my, uh, uh, my, uh, I'm using Mac OS, I'm gonna get the CLI for Mac OS and I can simply um, get the link to it and install it in my development environment. And I've already done that. So I'm gonna skip that part. But once you have H2O CLI installed and configured uh, or added to your path, um, ne the next step is to actually get the starter kit so that you can use the convenience commands and you can look at the guide. Um, so I'm gonna clone the repository first. So this, so this is the hands-on demo and um, I am setting up, I'm, I'm getting the prerequisites for the hands-on demo. Okay, so I, I have the repository now. So in this short demo, um, we'll do a few um, primary, like we'll, we'll demonstrate a few, the, the most important use cases. Um, starting with how to actually configure your development environment. So it points to the H2AI cloud instance um, for the wildfire challenge. Um, and then uh, we'll look at two different examples. Um, one is privately deploy so that you can debug it and you can collaborate with your team and it's only visible to you. And the next one is publicly import. So it's there on the app store. Um, so let's first configure the, let's first configure your development environment. So if you look at, um, if you look at the starter kit, there's a whole section and uh, there's a whole section on publishing your wave apps on the AI cloud. And it's, um, it's concise, but it's pretty descriptive um, and, and uh, gives you a good idea of uh, what the different components mean and how to get started. But to give a quick demo, um, let's start with uh, configuration. So I'm gonna go in the wave app directory first. Um, how's my, how's the font of the terminal? Is it good, Joe? Yeah, it's good enough. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so Let's first uh, configure, uh, using the H2O CLI, let's first configure the development environment. So I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna use the make file and say make publish, uh, sorry, make generate cloud config. And for those of you who are, um, who, who don't want to use or are not unable to use the make file, um, you can simply look at the, underlying commands for it in the make file itself. So let me take a look at it here for just a second. Um, so configuration, publishing, uh, privately and publishing publicly are the three main use cases. And configuration basically says um, you have this config file H2O wildfire CLI config toml that has the um, uh, address and the token and all the details you need uh, for authentication. Um, so we're saying we'll get the token and we'll store it there. Um, but if you're using a make file, you can simply run uh, make generate cloud config. And it does the, it does, it does uh, most of the configuration for you. The last step is to actually get the token so it says visit, visit this um, link to get your token. So I'm gonna go get a token right now. Oh, oh sorry, I didn't <laughs> copy the full URL, my bad. Come on. Okay, so this is my token and I'm gonna provide that to the CLI and okay, so it says my configuration is now written. So um, going back to the guide, sorry. Uh, oh, here publishing your wave apps. So um, I've done the configuration step. So so now my development environment using the H2O CLI points to 
the wildfire challenge cloud instance, which is challenge.istro.ai. So, so my development environment points to this and I'm already authenticated using the token I just generated. Um, so, so, so now let's look at uh, the two examples, how to get your app deployed privately and publicly. So before I do that, um, one of the prerequisites was the app toml file. And um, we have provided a template uh, for the participants and Essentially, you need to like you can uh, update and change the name of the uh, of the app, and you can provide your own description and um, screenshots and icons. Um, but we we have a, we have provided a template so that you can get started within minutes. Um, you just have to update that and put your own team name in there. So um, let me open that file. Okay, so this is what the app toml file looks like. And here it says, this, this is the name of the app, version, title, etc. So here I'm gonna fill in my team name. Let's call it make with H2O demo. Um, and I'll add that to the title as well. description. I'm going to leave the um, default description in there. And yeah, that's it. I'm all ready um, to get the app on the cloud instance. Okay, so um, the first one, which is private deploy, uh, sorry, deploy privately. Uh, so in the guide, I'm looking at uh, the command for that, which is make publish cloud private. So I'm going to run that. It's gonna take about a minute or so, depending on the upload speed of the internet. But once that's done, this app will be deployed privately and it will also launch a private instance of the app for you. And it'll provide a link to it here so you can directly go and use the app. So in the meantime, Joe, do we have any questions? Um, and how how is the uh, speed? Am I am I um, uh, am I clear, or is there is there are there any questions? Yeah, that's very good. Um, so thank you for this. So let me look at some questions now. Uh, we can also answer them later because I think it's more general questions instead of the the wave uh, deployment. So uh, at the end of so we will show. Uh, people where to find more relevant, uh, relevant and useful uh, resources. So that's something I can show later on. And then uh, whether they can get some help or we can show them the forum later. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's all the question right now, but uh, yeah, you can uh, keep going with your demo. Okay, thank you. So um, uh, so the, the import failed or the deployment failed because uh, I, yeah, the name is too long. Um, so I'm just gonna say demo. Because uh, there's a limit to the name and like it combines the name and version. So if it's too long, it'll say try again. So I'm going to do that. Yeah, and that's a good point, Joe. Like we'll link uh, the participants. And after this demo, we'll link everybody to the developer guide and the uh, starter kit. And everything we're showing here um, is available in the starter kit and the developer guide with more details, um, clearer description, examples. And um, we are also happy to answer any questions um, on the discussions page that Srini mentioned for the wildfire challenge. So I'm just giving it 
a minute to publish the app privately. Okay, so it's done. This is the URL I mentioned for the instance. So the difference between an app and an app instance is um, an app bundle is available and you can spin up as many instances as you like. So what this command does is not only uh, uh, imports the app, but also um, launches an instance for you. So you can directly go to the instance and we should see this app in the Uh, in my apps, yeah, here. Um, wildfire challenge submission title make with H2O demo. This is the one we just did. And it says it's private. So only I can launch instances for it. Okay, so this is the starter kit. A um, lot of you might already have seen this before. Um, so, so this is now private. And you could also make so one of the cool things is you can also change the visibility once it's deployed and once it's imported. So I can go here and say, I want to make the visibility uh, to all users. So then that app, um, this app wildfire challenge title make with H2O demo, this, is, this will become available on the app store, but instead of changing the visibility, we'll look at the other command. So if I go on the app store, um, I, I, I can't find it since it's private. So um, when I say publish cloud public, My internet upload speed is not the greatest, so <laughs> it takes some time. Don't worry about it. I think you are doing great. Uh, I think you, could, you should also mention that you know, people can just use the UI to to change it from private to to public, right? Without using the CLI, is that correct? Yes, yes. So yeah. that's uh, one of the things I um, was talking about. So, like in yeah. your apps, like suppose um, you don't want to deploy it uh, publicly first, you put it privately and um, once, like if you're happy with it and you don't want to redeploy it, you can always change the visibility here from the UI. Yep. You can also do other things from the UI like import an app and delete an app, etc. So this is done. It's saying um, it's finished deploying. So if I go on the app store, here I see it now. Wildfire challenge submission. I didn't add any description just for the demo purposes. So there's no description, but here's the app. And um, so if I, if I make myself a visitor and not an administrator, um, uh, oh, not sure why. I think I didn't, since I didn't sign up as a, as a user, I can't see any apps. Like all the participants, when they go um, on the sign up page and uh, sign up as a participant, then they have access to the apps. Since I'm, I haven't done that and I'm just uh, an administrator in this case, I don't see the apps as a visitor mode. But any visitor who goes on this page or any participant who goes on this page should, should see these three apps. Um, and this is the one we just deployed. And yeah, I can see it on my screen, so don't worry about it. Okay, thank you. Thanks for confirming, Joe. And if I go in my apps, um, I can change the visibility from, oh, sorry, not this one. Visibility from all users to private, update. And now if I go on the app store, it's not there anymore and Joe can confirm. Um, and I can also delete the apps. So, um, so when I deployed it privately, um, 
I have one instance of it running. So if I go inside instances, I see it here. Oh, so for collaboration, this is one of the other cool things. Um, suppose my app is private. Um, here in this case, both my apps are private actually. And I have one instance running of the private app. I can make the instance, not the app, the instance itself visible to all users. So this means anybody can access the instance, but you need a link to it. Without the link, you can't access to it. You don't have access to it. So if I take this link and I give it to Joe, or if I give it to Shrini, um, they, can, they can access my app instance. So although the app is private, we've made the instance um, visible to all users, and then I can make it private again. Um, and if I, if I want to clean up and I, I want to delete my previous apps, I can just use the UI for that. There are uh, convenience commands for that. Uh, you could use H2O CLI. Um, yeah. And that's it. That's, that's, the, that's the AI cloud part. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, anybody has. That's excellent. Thank you, Asim. So, uh, uh, Shirini, you, are you here? Could you uh, go back to the uh, the final slide of your presentation with the links to all the resources? Hi, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep, yep. Could you show us the uh, the last slide, please? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, fighting with Zoom here. Oh. Give all right, do it now. All right, there is our. That's great. That's great. Yeah. So, so everyone, please know if you have more questions or you want to uh, get more information about each step, uh, please go to uh, this link here. And you know, in the next couple of days, uh, I will also work with Shirini and Asim to kind of capture the the, the key points from this video, from this session here, uh, into change it into um, some other formats, maybe a blog post or maybe other uh, kind of uh, post on LinkedIn. Uh, so don't worry about uh, if you can't uh, you know, figure out all the steps in one go, we will try to uh, provide more information for you um, to, to digest the information. So I think we are running out uh, of time today, uh, but thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, do leave a comment on on uh, our platform or LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube, and we'll uh, follow up later. And thank you again, my colleague Suini and Asim. Thank you for your help today. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the show as well. So we'll see you uh, in in a week's time. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.